Welcome to the Healthier Tech Podcast, the show about building a healthier relationship with modern technology. Now here are your hosts, R. Blank and Stephanie Warner. While data bits, bytes, and big data are on his daily agenda, Dr. Corey Frogley is a dedicated pro to the chiropractic profession. Even more important, if you were to ask Corey, he would tell you he is 100% a people person. Building relationships is all about making a connection. Building a successful business is about connecting the data to the people it's most relevant for. As it relates to our podcast, his family has used as their North Star healthier bodies to help you succeed better, faster, and longer. We are looking forward to chatting with Blue IQ founder. Welcome, Corey, to the Healthier Tech Podcast. So good to be here, Ari. Thank you for uh, having me on your show. Oh, no. Thank you so much for making the time. So just as a starting point, uh, I understand, and I, I know it's not exactly on point with what I just said we were going to talk about, but uh, I understand you're, you're the 10th of 10 children. Yeah, wild, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Where to, so what? Yeah. yeah what, there's a can to, of worms. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, that that ties right into kind of my identity. Crazy enough, my my dad was a medic in World War II, so you can imagine how old my dad was when he had me. Um, <laughs> and he was on a path to become a medical doctor, but because my mom's dream, like her passion, was kids, she wanted thirteen. Um, again, oh, wow. I, I have no idea where she got that number. I have four. So when I think of 13, like <laughs> my knees go weak, uh, <laughs> but after two really, really difficult labors with her first two children, they almost lost my mom in childbirth and her OB turned to her and said, Hey, no more kids. Like you're going to be crippled by the time you're in your mid to late twenties. You won't even be able to take care of the two that you have. Like there's no chance you're having 13. So with, with that devastating, crushing news, you know, isn't that interesting that in life, when people tell you, you can't get to your moonshot, like your dream, like that, that changes trajectory, right? You, you mm -hmm. all of a sudden start looking at resources, like what's available to me. And she did, she pivoted from traditional medicine and she looked into alternative healthcare that led her to everything from homeopathy to acupuncture, to just anything she could find, find and chiropractic wasn't like it's booming, you know, what it is today. It was back in the fifties. So long story short, she got treated. Uh, they diagnosed her properly because she had scoliosis. And after uh, treating her, she felt so much better. They went for baby number three, this time, no complications in labor, the, just a healthy, perfect, normal labor. And that's what pivoted my dad from the medical profession to chiropractic. He graduated as a chiropractor. By the time he graduated, he had five kids and uh, they made it to 10. So I'm, I'm <laughs> grateful. You got in under the wire, right I, under the wire. I slid right in. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so your dad becoming a chiropractor, I, I gather influenced you greatly because that's, that's, that's what you've become, right? So how, how, can you speak a little bit about the ways in which you know, that influence kind of played out? Yeah, I mean, 10 kids, seven boys, six of us became chiro chiropractors, right? Wow. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so just a little <laughs> bit of influence. <laughs> he was such a big pioneer of the profession. He actually developed the, the third largest technique used in chiropractic. And he ran the college. He was actually the grandson of the founder of chiropractic. So B or D.D. Palmer founded chiropractic in 1895. His grandson, David Palmer, uh, was the president uh, when my dad graduated and my dad became his executive vice president. So when I was, when I decided I wanted to become a chiropractor, I actually entered the profession knowing I wanted to do more than build a healthcare practice, which I did, um, built the largest holistic healthcare practice in the state of Utah, but it was technology. I, I knew there was something that we needed to bring to the profession to help scale and grow and elevate the entire profession. I didn't know what the medium was going to be when I came into the profession in 2000, but here we are 23 years later and I, I now have a tech company. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So I definitely want to talk uh, about that, but it's something you just said before we get to, to Blue IQ, yeah. something you just said reminded me of something else I heard you say in a, in a different interview, uh, which is 
uh, and I think it connects to, to what you were just saying, right? You have to slow down to speed up. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you were starting, you knew you had to do something different, but you didn't know what that was. And then obviously you figured that out. So can you, can you, can you speak just a little bit to that transformational, uh, uh, the transformation that you went through and, and how it relates to slowing down and speeding up? Yeah, I really appreciate that question. And for your audience, I want you to think for a second, if you'll just kind of clear your mind and think for a second, if you listen to that inner voice that's in you, you've heard it calling at you. (laughs) You've heard it saying, uh, you were born for greatness. You know, I really do believe that all of us have greatness in us and a very specific God-given gift that when nurtured and developed and we, we kind of weed the garden, you know, growing up with a big family, we had an acre and half of that was a garden. So I was constantly in the summers weeding that garden. And my mom, my mom just instilled that in me, like your character, your, who you're becoming is going to be more about what you're removing so that those innate gifts have space and time to grow. So here I was as this chiropractor growing, you know, a successful practice and it became very, very busy. Um, But in the busyness of that and getting married and having kids and, you know, just, I just realized very early that if I allowed the whirlwind, the, the life to just take over the busyness, that little voice in my head, I couldn't hear it. It's almost like there was so much vibration, so much noise of busyness that I kind of lost that for a little while. And, and I felt disconnected. I, why, was I, why was I financially successful, but internally unhappy? <laughs> um, I felt kind of guilty. Like here I am as a husband and a father, but why do I feel like a piece of me is missing? And it wasn't until I slowed down, I really had to, um, and and I credit my wife tremendously for this because she kept saying to me, you're doing too much. Instead of being good at a lot of things, like what is that one thing that you wanna become great at? And it, it was, it was retreating from the daily noise. It was finding a a consistent cadence to connect with that inner voice. And when I finally did, and I finally connected that to innate and allowed um, the calling to come to the surface, man, it, it just became clear of why I felt that the way that I did. And it didn't immediately become easy, but um, I'll tell you, here we are many years later, and it's it's that was like one of the most important things that I put into my daily habits was that, that slowing down every day, connecting to that inner voice, weeding the garden, (laughs) allowing ourselves to become who God created us to be. And that was beautiful. Um, And, but so that realization uh, led you to create or led you to a point in life where you realized you wanted to create Blue IQ, right? Yeah, because I kept interacting with other docs. I mean, I, I'm in the, we're in the dental space and, and in the chiro space and any provider, right? Any, anybody with a doctorate in specifically patients, right? Um, what happens is you go through professional school, but you don't get business training. Like not one business class. I mean, maybe it was a business class, but it was to learn how to build insurance. It wasn't learning how to hire somebody or interview somebody or build a team or run financials or read a PL or know what a balance sheet was. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yet so many physicians become business owners. And I was sitting in a in a conference of one of my mentors, and, and he said something that just stopped me in my tracks. And it was do you guys know the difference between a job and a business? And I thought I did. But as we dove into that concept, I realized that in my own practice, I had built myself a job. Meaning, if I stepped away from it, it stopped producing. And that connected to me so deeply because 
even with my dad doing so many things, running the college, having a private practice the entire time, having a huge family, having this massive garden and property that we were taking care of, he was scared to death to go on vacation because cash flow stopped. And I remember that stress that he had and feeling that stress and being, you know, kind of intuitive and feeling that from him. I, I didn't enjoy vacation <laughs> because dad wasn't enjoying vacation. And so I just, I knew I wanted something different. I knew I wanted to build a business that was delivering incredible healthcare, learning business systems. And as I started creating those systems with some incredible business partners, we realized one day that, oh my gosh, like this needs to be in a software. And that was kind of the leap. Like let's, let's build this into a software that would automate the process and, and save the time of gathering all this data, make data-driven decisions. And if you could connect that to a team member where the team member becomes the steward of the, the data, the product, the, the product of the system that they're in charge of, it, it was just this game changer. Like all of a sudden team members were showing up happier. They were more engaged. They were more fulfilled because they could see the contribution. We could tie incentives to it. It, it was pretty cool. And so when, 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 was, when, when did you actually start what, uh, what is now Blue IQ? Yeah, so in 2013, I, I filed the actual company. Um, I, I didn't, you know, you hear this voice calling you to build something. And I had a feeling of what it was supposed to be. But then you involved developers and designers and they start putting in their <laughs> opinions. And we gave birth to a software. It just wasn't really what I wanted to build. And so for two and a half years, I, I uh, you know, we, we ended up with customers and we had cash flow and we were growing it. It, it just was limited. And I, one of the hardest things I did and it, it, I, I credit it back to my wife and I credit it back to this internal voice of getting clear. I had to slow down again. And I still remember the hotel room we were at. We were with my family. I couldn't sleep. It's 2 a.m. Um, I pulled out my laptop and I wrote a declaration. And it was a declaration to my partners to say, hey, what we built is cool. It's just not what I'm supposed to build. Uh, there's essence of it. It's just not the full thing. And I am just letting you know that I cannot continue to put my heart and soul into this. I'm recommending we pivot. We build this over here. I diagrammed it out. <laughs> and that was in 2015. It took from 2015 to 2018 to still just learn, like, like I'm a chiropractor, right? I wasn't a tech guy. I I had to learn the industry. I had a I found some really am amazing people that were in the profession that were willing to mentor me, uh, help me through the path. We launched beta in 2018. We fully launched it in 2019. And oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's been a grind, but it's been incredible. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like <laughs> quite the journey. I, I, a little bit off topic, but what the reminded what you were saying reminded me of a lot of things. But one of them is that scene in Jerry Maguire. I don't. Do, yeah. do you ever? <laughs> Wait, which one? Is it show me the money, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he wakes up in the middle of the night and writes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. About yeah how that's the manifesto. Going in the wrong direction, and there you yeah. go. That that was my Jerry Maguire moment. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're at the show me the money moment. <laughs> yeah, I love I love that. It's it's like, you know, the it, V1 was your introduction into that tech space, but you still had the, you know, ingrained grounded knowledge that you needed to that you would need to you needed to stop and slow down again and recognize that this wasn't what was good for you and it wasn't what you were trying to build and the strength to to pivot that's huge because, you know, entre a lot of entrepreneurs don't don't allow themselves that space to, to listen to themselves, to slow down. It's always your it's the next goal post, the next milestone. And I love that you knew to weed the garden and to allow the space. I love that analogy and I'm going to borrow it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to, to be able to, to slow down and recognize that you need to and then trust that whatever is next is going to come. You're going to, you're going to give yourself space to, to have that epiphany 
and that realization and to hear your voice and to hear what's where your body's actually guiding you. Yeah. I mean, if your listeners can connect to me on any level, it's that, that you are enough. You're more than you realize you are. No, that, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I it's like, there's another thought there. I mean, yeah. I'm a, no, I'm getting a little emotional here just thinking about it because of my own journey. Yeah. That it's, it's oftentimes what you've allowed to creep into your life. Um, not that it's bad. It's just distracting. Yes. It's like, As a chiropractor, if I had to feel somebody's spine, if I had to palpate somebody, but yet I had to do it through mittens, (laughs) it'd be really hard to be a great chiropractor. (laughs) So what, what if you allowed to creep in your life that are your mittens, that's keeping you from feeling, that's sensing really your gifts. And when you get that right, when you get super clear on that, then the thing that you're supposed to create shows up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I absolutely resonate with it. And it's, you know, allowing yourself the space, but also to trust that it's going to come, that, that, that you will hear the voice and you, you the, the, the direction will become clear and just trusting yeah. the slowing down and making space is actually the right thing to do in a world full of the next milestone, <laughs> the yeah. next thing we have to do, the next goalpost. I love yeah. that. It's beautiful. You're really, Absolutely. by the way, you're very skilled. Uh, you have a lot of skills, but you are very skilled at analogies. The, uh, yes. the mitten on the spine, that was a <laughs> very, very illustrative. And uh, one thing that this reminds, on a prior episode we had on um, uh, a, a scientist named Dr. Dever Davis. And I, I remember it was just very impactful for me when at one moment she said, you know, because you know, the past few years have been kind of crazy for everybody. And she said, you know, it, it, it leads to everyone walking around and living life. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, but living life like everything is an emergency. And she mm-hmm. said, life is not an emergency. And you have to, you have to kind of step back. And I, re- I remember for me in particular at that moment in time, it, it was super impactful to just hear that. And uh, it led to some big changes, both, you know, personally, but also um, professionally. And uh, I hear very similar uh, very similar message in, in, in what you're saying. And I think, I think it's beautiful. And I think it's also really timely for, for people to, to, to kind of hear that kind of reinforcement. Yeah. I, I love that. That's, that's a great statement. And it's almost like, <laughs> uh, not to get too much into politics or anything like that, but it's, <laughs> it's like, we're almost creating emergencies to, to put people into this state where it's just, it's exhausting. It's so yeah. exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. It is. It's, it's true. It's, it, it feels like right now it's all about being distracted because there's, you know, what happens if we all stop and listen to ourselves, what decisions will we make? What would we put into power? What will we put in front of us if we actually stopped and listened to what we really want and gave credence to what, is good for our souls and what and our life. Amen. So if I may, I got chills. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a the listeners, yeah. <laughs> this, this episode is sponsored by Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, uh, take t- taking a, a little bit of a, a, a turn here. I was recently on a podcast uh, with a chiropractor and the conversation, I, I actually, I turned it around and asked, he's the, he was interviewing me, but I turned it around and asked him and I'm going to ask you something similar, which is um, what are, or do, do you, as a starting point, do you see uh, people coming into your office or hear from colleagues coming into their offices? Um, what are effectively injuries resulting from their relationship with technology. And, you know, one in particular that I read about a lot, but I don't know if I'm just, if it's just in the media or if it's actually a thing, but it's something that they're calling text neck yeah. there. And, and this other chiropractor said, he, he, he's, he's, he's encountering kids that are four and five years old that already have arthritis yeah. because of their relationships with their phones. Could you, could you talk a little bit about your experience with that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like this is, it's amazing when you look at history, when you look at biomechanics, when you look at the way the spine develops. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of this information from your traditional medical world because they don't, um, this isn't their schooling. Like you just have to realize 
what's the source of where I'm getting information and what's like, like our entire education, it's eight years of school. We just don't spend any time on pharmacology. Like that's not our expertise. I'm not going to prescribe you a drug to cover up a symptom because that's not what I do. What we look at is biomechanics, like how do the joints articulate? And we believe that the master organ of your entire system is your nervous system, your central nervous system. It's the only organ completely enclosed by bone. And it only takes the weight of a quarter, that much pressure on a nerve root to shut down that nerve function by 40%. Wow. But you don't even feel symptoms until you've lost 60% function in a joint or in, in your organs, you don't have sensory nerve endings. So you don't feel a heart disease until the heart attack. You don't feel liver problems until, you know, it's down the road. So when we look at developing the infantile spine, it comes out in what's called the C shape. It's a, it's a C to fit in the womb. Right. But that's not the way we weight bear. The reason why we're a weight bearing organism is because of S curves that develop in the spine. And so that cervical curve has to develop by a, a, the baby getting tummy time. And as it lays on its tummy, it begins to explore the world. It looks up, it wants to see mom. Where's mom at? Where's dad? What's that noise over there? So they begin exploring their world by lifting this 10 pound weight of the skull. It's not 10 pounds as a baby, but by the time you're an adult, it is. Well, that develops what's called a 45 degree C curve. And the, the C1, the top bone in the neck should be balanced over C7. Well, for every half of an inch that the head moves forward, it increases the weight of the head, like a bowling ball. Imagine the difference between holding a bowling ball into your chest versus holding it way out in front of you. Like it's, the weight of the bowling ball didn't change, but the strain, the ability to balance it changes everything. So when you look at your head and as that head begins to move away from the body, it increases the stress onto those joints. Well, if C4, C5 is the apex of that cervical curve and your head is moving forward, more stress is being placed on C4, C5, C6, not as much on C7, but mostly those. Well, I mean, you think about iPads, you think about texting, you think about just sitting and watching movies, like our babysitter has become our digital devices. It's our entertainment source. We're spending a tremendous amount of time um, you know, just on those devices. And so we're not doing the exercises to restore the proper position of the neck. And as if it didn't develop properly, because maybe you didn't get as much tummy time, maybe like in our era, uh, remember those Johnny jumpers that would hang from the door frame and you'd put your kid in mm -hmm. it and the kid would bounce up and down. Worst device for developing the spine's proper biomechanics so you end up with a, a weight-bearing infant that hasn't even developed a cervical curve yet, let alone the lumbar curve. So the lumbar curve then starts developing as the crawling patterns develop. So if you have an, a child that didn't crawl for very long, it probably didn't develop its lumbar curve properly. So you end up being like 80% of the population who will suffer with low back pain at some point in their life a lot of it ties back to these proper biomechanics. And too many people blame their pain or their health condition on you know, a, an accident. Like I woke up with a kink in my neck, I must have slept wrong. Well, no, you didn't sleep wrong. <laughs> you have a biomechanical instability that's <laughs> developed over years and your pillow now just happened to put your neck in a position that exacerbated it. So you now have a symptom. So you get rid of the symptom and the medical model, you got rid of the problem, but that's not how chiropractors look at it. We wanna look at function. How do we restore function? So not just symptoms, like, like let's, a, a properly balanced biomechanical structure can handle a lot of stress and not become symptomatic or break down with degenerative arthritis. So that's what we do as a profession. We analyze x-rays, we look at biome biomechanical, you know, structures and where weight bearing is and, and repetitive injuries over time that changes the biomechanics to an ins unstable or 
changing the stress points on the spine where they shouldn't be so that not only can we prevent future issues, we can put you through treatment that restores the proper biomechanics, bringing you back to a stable structure that can handle stress because we can't get rid of stress. Is part of this uh, uh, is treatment, the right word, treatment regimen that, yeah. that you put your clients through? Custom, um, it, do you address the ways in which, or the frequency or ways in which that they, for instance, are using their phone or the way they are sitting when they are binging Netflix? Is that, does that come up or, 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 or are you trying to kind of just uh, fix the, uh, the mechanism? That's a great question. So if you came into my, my practice with a rock in your shoe and you said, doc, I can't walk. Like my foot hurts so bad. Um, can you take a look at it? And if I just gave you Advil, like it'd feel better for a minute, right? And the Advil wars off and the foot hurts again because the pebble's still in the shoe. You got to get rid of the root cause. And so if you came in and I just took the pebble out of the shoe, allowed the bruise to heal, you, you, you wouldn't have the pain again because we actually got rid of the root cause. So that's what we really look for with our patients. Okay, now that I've identified the biomechanical imbalance, what caused it? For some people, it's an auto accident. For some people, it was when they were dropped on their head as a baby. For some people, it was getting hit in the face with a soccer ball when they were playing you know, junior league soccer. And for a lot, it's, it's the way they're using their posture throughout the day. So we actually um, have done posture classes that we require certain patients to go through, that if you wanna be a patient here, you have to go through posture class to learn how to set up your workstation, to learn how to use your digital devices and proper mechanics and for proper timeframes and to give yourself breaks and here's stretches. And then what could you do that we, we actually call spinal hygiene. Spinal hygiene is just like you brush your teeth on a regular basis to remove the stress that food is putting on your teeth. How do you do spinal hygiene every day that removes the stress that you're putting on your spine from the world that we live in now of such a digital, you know, work environment? That's great. I, uh, I, I, I feel like I would like to take that class much less. I think everyone should, should be introduced to information like that, that that's really, so on those, along those lines, before we, uh, before we wrap up and let you get back to your, your busy day, um, are there one or two pieces of uh, advice that you could give my listeners that would uh, help keep them out of your office? Help keep them <laughs> out of <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So what I want everybody to do listening to this right now, and if you guys will go along with me on this, go ahead and sit up nice and tall in wherever you are. If you're listening to this laying down, I want you to sit up. I want you to get in a seated position, right? Now what I want you to do is go ahead and move your head forward. So you're pushing your nose straight out, almost like a, I don't know, like a woodpecker. Your, your head is now sitting out in front of your body. That's perfect. Now round your shoulders so that they're now slouching forward. This is the typical posture that I'm seeing in kids and people who are sitting at a workstation. What I want you to do now is take a deep breath in through your nose and just out through your mouth. And I just take, I want you to do it again, but do it as deep as you can. Okay, I want you just to pay attention one more time. Do it again to the amount of air that you're getting into your body without changing posture. Your head is still forward. Your shoulders are still rounded. Go ahead and do it again. Okay, now all I want you to do is sit back up straight. I want you to take your finger and put it on the, chin just below your lip and just lightly just push that back so your head is now over your ab your chest right then what i want you to do is let the shoulders come back almost like you're in what we call a military posture you're at attention right so you should be sitting up tall your shoulders should be back your head should be balanced over your torso i now want you to take that same deep breath in through the nose do it with me Or give me, give me a rating, like a percentage. Did you get? Oh, I felt like twice. I could get in twice the amount of air. Is what like it felt 200% like two hundred percent more air. <laughs> what, what is the basic life source to the human body? 
I, I, I think you're, you're going for breathing. <laughs> right. <laughs> we kind of need oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that by decreasing the oxygen content in the bloodstream, we increase dramatically the risks of cancers? Fatigue, Does not surprise me. Yeah. Depression. I mean, you name it, you name the disease that's related to oxygen deprivation. So what you just experienced is moving from a different state. If you're existing in a state where you're reducing your oxygen capacity by the posture you're holding each day. And if you could just change that one thing, become aware, aware of how I'm working on my phone. And if I'm holding it in a position that's putting me in that posture that I just showed you, then you're decreasing your oxygen capacity. If you can intentionally set a timer when you're working at a workstation, every 15 minutes, just have a little bell that goes off that was a posture check. Oh, oh, I need to round my shoulders. I need to put my finger on my chin and push my head back. Okay, I'm back to work. <laughs> every 45 minutes, get up and walk around, get into the posture, stand against a wall so your heels your bum, the back of your shoulders and the back of your head are all touching the wall at the same time. And then round your shoulders back and put the back of your hands on that wall and take 10 deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, nice and slow, takes you two minutes. And then you're right back to the workstation in a good posture. You have posture awareness, but what you just did for your body to increase the oxygen capacity in the bloodstream, it like, stimulates endorphins that releases dopamine like all the good things that increase mood and we know we're more productive as a human being when we are in a good mood and it's just these simple things that can be life-changing that was super powerful and i really appreciate you you sharing that, that was a, a really great way to, to to go out on this episode before before we say goodbye i do want to just throw in one one final thing which is you know well, A, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you Absolutely. and I've learned so much. Yes. Um, but the other thing I want to say is with Blue IQ, you know, because this is, this is the Healthier Tech podcast and a lot of uh, what we talk about is focused on some of the, you know, the ways that which we're maybe, uh, what we were just talking about, some of the ways in which maybe we're using technology in ways that isn't so healthy. But with Blue IQ, you're, you've designed a form, a piece of technology in a very specific way, in your very specific vision to accomplish a specific goal, and in a way that creates such value and helps so many people. And um, I just wanted to, to highlight that. I think that's a great example of, 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 of a positive use of tech, of healthier tech. And so I want to thank you for what you've done. And I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I think any of us that are in business or any entrepreneurial, like we all kind of know we need to manage our businesses by the numbers and profits, right? That's kind of an important part of business. We have to be <laughs> profitable. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we just created a, a free Facebook group for people that want to uh, not necessarily use our software, just learn more about how do I become a data driver? How do I build a team around data and connect, you know, your purpose, your passions around seeing it in the data. And so, yeah, the, the data-driven practice. It's uh, just a free community you guys can be a part of. But uh, So the group's name is the data-driven practice on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, the data-driven practice. To search for? Yeah, any, any business member could be in it. It's, uh, it's just learning, like, what are KPIs and what are driving your business by lead metrics instead of lag metrics? And how do we produce this cadence of accountability for the team? And yeah, it's just a fun community that uh, it's yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. What is the what is the story the data is telling us and how do we yeah. interpret it and then make smart decisions that help our business and, and, and our lifestyles based on what it's what it's saying. And I, I think that's something that people are it's, it's intimidating when you see a bunch of numbers and data and all this stuff <laughs> happening if you don't know how to read the story. So I, oh. I love that you're you're open. Your group is open to to others as well. I think it's very yeah. helpful. Thank you. This is I've been an amazing amazing interview. You guys and if, are if people, oh shucks. <laughs> <laughs> and if people want to uh, learn more about Blue IQ, the URL there is getblueiq.com. Get blue right. Yep. If you're a dentist <laughs> or a chiropractor, uh, funny enough, we actually have lots of different businesses using our 
it's all about integrations and we have integrations to Google, integrations to QuickBooks, mm -hmm. integrations to Facebook. So we actually end up with a lot of different businesses using our, our software. You just, oh, that's great. yeah, you manually enter some of the other data points, but for chiropractors, for dentists, we have the integrations with your patient management software. So it just pulls all of that in. So we create an entire, you know, these beautiful dashboards and that we can connect to your team members and mine your data for revenue opportunities and a lot of cool stuff. Excellent. Really well, great. thank thank you so much for coming on the show today, Doug Frogley. I, uh, uh, I, I personally really appreciate it and your time. And congratulations on Blue IQ. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Healthier Tech Podcast. Remember to check the show notes for all the links and resources mentioned in the show. Please like and subscribe to the Healthier Tech Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Get your free quick start guide to building a healthy relationship with technology and our latest information at healthiertech.co.